Hello everyone and welcome to the session in which we will keep working with what's included in the cost of inventory. So it's very important to determine the proper amount in inventory. So what dollar amount do we account to inventory? The general rule as we saw earlier any cost necessary to bring the inventory to a saleable condition is included in the cost of the inventory. So any cost that that's needed to bring this asset this inventory ready to be sold it's considered inventory cost like what obviously the biggest one usually the purchase price if you have to pay any taxes freight in not out freight in and we talked about that we talked about that in the prior session insurance packaging minus any discount man minus any returns and allowances so all these issues we discussed earlier and we discussed other issues that we have to be aware of when we have FOB shipping FOB destination and as I told you it's very important FOB shipping FOB as destination when you are conducting an audit when you're counting the inventory and your job as an auditor also we looked at consigned goods as well in this session, we will focus on two more topics that we have to be familiar with when it comes to costing inventory is sales with repurchase agreement and sales with high rate of return. So in this session, we'll focus on these two topics and how these two topics influence or affect the inventory that we have on hand. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's start by discussing sales with repurchase agreement or something called repo. How does repo works? Well, here's what, here's what happens. Let's assume I have an item, a computer, my laptop. Here's what I can do. I can tell you, look, I can give you my, I can sell you, I'm going to put in quotes, sell my computer to you for $800. I will sell it. You give me $800. I'll give you the computer. You give me $800. Now I have in my pocket $800. A month later, I will buy back my same computer for a thousand. So you, all what you have to do is I'm going to sell it to you for 800 and buy it back for a thousand hold on a second this does not make any sense why would you do that what I'm doing here is I am putting my collateral up as a collateral so I'm, I'm asking you for eight hundred dollar I'm giving you my computer and I promise to do what to buy it back from you for a thousand what does that mean it means you made a profit of two hundred dollar all what you had to do is gave me eight hundred dollar took the computer as a collateral then get back the thousand dollar so this is a form of financing this is not really a sale so if it's not really a sale it means you still have the inventory and I will talk about a company called Lehman Brothers in a moment tell you what they did so basically here you are in quote selling you're not really selling the inventory at the same time agree to repurchase the inventory at a later date at a higher price now the difference is the difference is interest as I told you the difference is for you who sold the computer the difference is $200 interest expense so all what I am I am doing is I am parking my inventory on someone else's balance sheet now let's talk about Lehman Brothers and this is very important from a practical perspective now Lehman did not have inventory in form of physical inventory what Lehman had on their balance sheet are financial assets specifically those financial assets were mortgaged backed securities mortgage backed securities those are the assets and those assets went down in value they dropped in value a lot so let's assume they purchase something for 1 million an asset for a million if they want to value it now it's worth six hundred thousand dollar so what they did is this what Lehman did they took those mortgage backed securities and they sold them in quote 
to another firm. They told the other firm, look, uh, I need financing. How about I transfer the, those mortgage-backed securities to you and you give me a million dollars and I will buy them back from you. I will give you, once I'm ready to buy them, I'll give you one million and fifty thousand or one million or one hundred thousand, more than what you paid me. And the other firm, the other party would say, sure, why not? Um, give me, um, yes, transfer those assets. I will give you a million. Then you, we have an agreement on the side that you buy it back from me. Now, the question is, why did Lehman did this? Why Lehman did this? Because they don't want those assets to be on the books at the end of the year. Because if they are, they will go down to 600,000. Hold on a second. So how about the other party? The other party is not valuing. The other party is assuming those assets are worth something. And that's why they agreed to give them the money. So the other party also did not care because the agreement is you buy it back from me. And the agreement is it's enforceable. You have to buy it. So they have a secured borrowing. Now, as long as Lehman was in good standing, the other company did not care. But the other companies did not know that those assets were no good. I'm not going to use the word shitty, but they were shitty assets. They were worthless. But what they did, all what the all what Lehman wanted to do is to make them disappear as of December 31st so the auditor don't worry about this and not only the auditor don't worry about this it looks like as if we made a sale and the other party they're gonna get their money so that's what Lehman did would make those assets disappear park them on someone else's balance sheet basically what they did is a repo now there are more rules there's repo 105 if you want to you could read about it to be considered a repo there are certain rules but we don't go into this it's called repo 105 and there's a right there's a reason why it's called 105 but that's beyond the scope of this so what we have to look at is the form nuts uh, this is form over substance the substance is you did not sell them you What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional multiple choice questions, resources, lectures uh, that will help you, exercises, true, false, that will help you whether you are an accounting student, CPA, CMA, CFA, invest in yourself. That's the best investment you can make. Good luck and study hard.